Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to a very, very highly requested video. So a lot of you may know that I actually did a top easy rare houseplants video. It might have even been a year ago or coming up a year ago very, very shortly actually. And it seems since I did the first video, I've had nothing but requests to do a second video. So here we are today. I've managed to round up another 10 more easy rare house plants. So as a lot of you may know, I own a plant shop, which means that to be honest, on a daily basis, I import, I take care of, and I send out a lot of different kinds of rare plants. This gives me some really solid experience in order to find you guys, you know, rare plants that I think are going to be reasonably easy to look after. There are one or two differences from this video and the video I originally did and I'm also scoring these plants slightly differently as well. Just makes the maths a little bit easier. Another thing I would honestly say that the plants in this video are still not as easy as the plants in the first video bar maybe one or two at the high end. This is because when I made my original video obviously I found the easiest of the easiest. When I do a repeat video I may not find something quite as easy as you know, the original list that I created where I really whittled it down to give you guys the easiest things that I've found. So I'm going to rank these plants based on their average score. So we are going to travel throughout this video. We're going to go from the least easy to the most easy. So all of the plants in this list are easy, but the ones I mentioned first are not as easy as the ones I mentioned last. The first factor is light, or more specifically tolerance of low light. This does not mean no light, it simply means low light. So reasonably dark corner of a room where it, you know, the plant's not really that exposed too much. The second factor I would like to tackle today is underwatering. So how resilient is this plant to underwatering? How quickly does it recover when it dries up? Can it handle it or can it not? The next factor I actually swapped out for temperature last time. I've swapped it for overwatering this time, mainly because I think that it's more important to everybody than temperature. The next factor we need to consider is tolerance of low humidity. And no, I don't mean no humidity. I'm talking so somewhere between 40 and 50%. I will get slightly more specific when I mention plants in this video, but just kind of assume that when I say low humidity, I do not really mean lower than 40%. The next factor we need to consider is shipping. So how well does this plant ship and how tolerant is it generally of the shipping process? So do we get yellow leaves? Does it drop leaves? Does it dry up into a crisp? Is it recoverable if you stick it in water? What are these plants like to ship? Do they look the same when they come out of the box as when they went in the box? And last but not least, we are measuring the rate of growth or the growth rate just so we have a rough idea of how easy these things are to grow and maybe if you're looking to propagate things, is that a factor to consider when you want to buy these plants? So moving from least easy to most easy, the first plant on my list is the Monstera Esqueleto. Now I must very quickly mention this is basically what a lot of people know as Monstera epipremnoides. It has actually been formally, you know, reclassified since. So if you're a little bit confused, just think of it as Monstera epipremnoides, even though we don't call it that anymore. So for lighting conditions, I give these guys a 4 out of 10, so not great. Now Monstera can generally take low light conditions, but I find that this plant just isn't very happy in low light, as in light that is too low. And if it's not happy, you may get yellowing leaves, but it's unlikely. The most likely thing that's going to happen is this plant is going to start producing runners. So you won't get any foliage, you'll just get runners with just nodes on. So in that sense, it could be a pro for some people, it could be a con. But for those reasons, I'm actually giving this plant a 4 out of 10 because if it doesn't get the conditions it likes, it's not going to continue to grow in the way that we would want it to. For underwatering, I actually give this plant a 3 out of 10. I don't think this plant loves being underwatered despite it being a monstera and despite it being reasonably tough. I do find that these leaves are actually a lot thinner than many other different kinds of monstera, so that could be a contributing factor. But I find if I underwater mine, I can sometimes get yellow leaves emerging pretty quickly. I do think they prefer to be on the slightly moister side. Conversely, I give this plant an 8 out of 10 for overwatering, as I do find that these roots on these plants are very, very thick and meaty, and they can kind of take a punch when it comes to overwatering. No, I'm not suggesting you overwater it all the time, but if you do, you're probably not going to see any issues, and the plant should recover just fine. 
For tolerance of low humidity, I give this plant a 7. Now, I think this plant sits reasonably well in 50% humidity, and that's not a great amount for an aroid. I don't really recommend taking it to 40 just because I feel that the leaves are very thin. It might do okay. I haven't really pushed it any lower than 45%. To be honest though, the plant isn't really going to thrive in anything lower than that at all. So you're best off keeping the humidity up, but I do think the plant is kind of tolerant. For tolerance of shipping, I give this plant a 4 out of 10. Now, in my experience, Monstera, unless it's like literally Deliciosa or Thai, they don't really love being shipped. They especially don't love being shipped with any extra water. So if you water them right before you ship, the plants just do not like that at all and you will definitely get yellow leaves. So not amazing at all on the shipping front. If you're going to ship them, I do recommend you keep them a little bit drier to kind of combat that. For rate of growth on these Monstera, I give them a 5 out of 10 because if you do not give them what they want, they won't grow. They will not deteriorate, so they will not, you know, slowly die and turn yellow, but they won't really grow. They will either stay as they are or they'll just send out runners. So for that reason, I'm not scoring them very highly at all for rate of growth. This gives us an average score of 5.2 out of 10, so not amazing. It's kind of mid-road, really. Next up, we have the Philodendron Pareso Verde, and I'm going to start with light. And for light, I actually give this a 4 out of 10. It's not amazing. Now, this plant will grow in low light, being that it is a Philodendron, but it's not going to look very sexy. Like, it's not going to look like the plant that you want it to look like. So you will get growth, but you will get very long petioles and very slim leaves. So you really kind of need to give this plant above average light, in my opinion, for it to grow really, really nicely. For underwatering, I give this plant a 7 out of 10, and that's mainly because I find that these plants are quite woody and their stems are quite woody, which usually means they can conserve water reasonably well. So if you happen to miss a watering or two, they should be okay. When it comes to overwatering, I find these plants are a little bit more on the delicate side. They don't really love being overwatered and it will take not a lot at all for you to get a yellow leaf if you push things just a little bit too far. So for that reason, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Tolerance of low humidity, I give this plant a 5 out of 10, mainly because if you don't give this plant the humidity it needs, it is more prone to leaves kind of buckling inside the caterpillars and not coming out properly and you'll actually get slapped leaves. Not only that, but the leaves won't grow as big. So again, if you want this plant to look kind of how it's supposed to look, how everyone has it looking on Instagram, you are going to need to give this plant slightly better conditions in order to get that. It's not good news for shipping, I'm afraid. I give these plants a 3 out of 10. Now, they don't ship terribly, but I do find in cooler conditions, you're almost certainly going to get a yellow leaf or two. They just do not like being shipped. They seem very, very finicky compared to a lot of other philodendron. Growth rate, however, they're actually very, very fast. So I give them an 8 out of 10 for rate of growth because, to be honest, they, you don't even need to keep them that happy and they will just pump out leaves very, very quickly. So if you're a fan of things that grow quick and you like being entertained and you, you need to be kept busy with new leaves, then this is definitely a plan to consider. This gives the plant an average score of 5.3 out of 10. So again, not amazing. Plant number three might surprise a few people. This is Anthurium crystallinum. Now hear me out, honestly, hear me out. So for tolerance of low light, I actually give these plants a six out of 10, which is quite high. I've had a lot of crystallinum kept in a more dark corner of my shop and they kind of just got left there and they've done nothing but pump out really big round plump leaves. So that's a huge plus point if you have a darker spot but you really fancy a kind of sexy velvety anthurium then it's a kind of good option for that. So this might surprise a few people but for underwatering I score this plant an 8 out of 10. Now as these plants are anthuriums they do genuinely appreciate a kind of wet dry cycle so they do like to dry out quite a bit before they're watered for this reason they're really really great if you do underwater and you do leave them that little bit longer they're probably not going to suffer too much for tolerance to overwatering i give these plants a five out of ten now anthurium are what are known as epiphytes and in this case it means that the plant will generally take in the natural environment of course it will take its nutrients from things like bark fallen debris and things like that. 
Not so much air as with other epiphytes, it will take its nutrients from elsewhere. For this reason, they are not that tolerant to being overwatered because they rely on oxygen quite a bit in order to aerate the roots. So they're not going to love being overwatered, but they can probably handle a flush or two. Just be careful. For tolerance of low humidity, I give these plants a 5 out of 10. Now, they are velvety anthuriums, which should automatically tell you that they do appreciate the extra humidity. I find if the humidity is a bit low, you shouldn't really get any leaves stuck as such. You may get some browning on the edges of the leaves, but generally speaking, crystallinum is quite tolerant. 50% will grow an anthurium crystallinum really quite fine. If anybody's seen the one that's in my shop at the moment, that has been grown in 50% humidity, so it's doing pretty well. Shipping, not so much a good outcome though. These plants don't ship unbelievably. It doesn't always happen. I would say it happens about 50% of the time but leaves can go through shock very, very quickly and they can get crispy and they can kind of dry up. Worst case scenario, you are left with a stump, but that stump will grow back just fine. And I actually find that once I've hardened off my plants and they've grown back in my conditions, they look 10 times bigger and better anyway. So it's nothing to worry about, just you might get some issues when you bring them in. Like you're not gonna kill them or anything like that. You just might get a bit of crisp. <laughs> For rate of growth, I give these plants a 6 out of 10. So they're not actually that bad. What can happen is they can go dormant for a period of anywhere between a few weeks to a few months. But once they leave that dormancy period, you will see that they grow reasonably fast. Keep them happy and keep them warm. You'll get some really good growth out of them. For Anthurium crystallinum, these scores together give an average of 5.5 out of 10. So we're moving up like incredibly slowly. <laughs> The fourth plant on my easy rare houseplants list is none other than a medium medium green form. So not the blue or the silver form because that's actually much more difficult to care for. I'm specifically talking about the green form. For tolerance of low light, I give these plants a 5 out of 10. Now they're good in low light, don't get me wrong, but similar to the Monstera Esqueleto, the first plant we mentioned, these plants will run like crazy. To be honest with you, they tend to run even if they've got good light. So you might have a few issues getting foliage, hence I've given it a 5 out of 10 because it's kind of hit and miss. For tolerance of underwatering, I give this plant a 4 out of 10. Now I do find that if these plants dry out a little bit too much, you are very quick to get a yellow leaf. And I reckon that's because of the thin stems that the plant has, i.e. if the stems are thin and the leaves are thin, this plant cannot conserve water very well. So it isn't really that tolerant of underwatering. The plus side of that, however, is that it can kind of tolerate overwatering a little bit more. So for tolerance of overwatering, I give this plant a 6 out of 10. No, it's not invincible, but if you keep it slightly on the moisture side, it's going to forgive you no problem. For tolerance of low humidity, I give these plants a 6 out of 10. Now I find that they're fine in 50%. I wouldn't really recommend lower than 45% because as I mentioned before, these leaves are very thin and I'm not so sure they're going to perform well and look great in low humidity because they're very, very thin and very, very fragile. It gets better though because for shipping, I give this plant a 9 out of 10 because honestly, it ships really, really well. And if you get yours in and it's a little bit wilted, if you pop that in water straight up the next day, it's back, it's plump and it looks lovely. It recovers very, very quickly from the process and it doesn't really suffer during the process. I don't seem to get yellow leaves. I don't seem to get browning. The worst that seems to happen is, as I mentioned, it will wilt. But if you just pop that in water, it will plump straight back up easily within 24 hours. Growth rate, I give this plant an 8 out of 10 because it does grow quickly. You just have to fight with the endless, and I mean endless, runners that grow from these plants. I have to keep chopping mine off at the shop because they will not stop growing. Overall though, a really, really fast growing plant. Can recommend. These scores together give the plant an average score of 6.3, so we're definitely getting easier now within our score range. The next easy rare house plant is one that I think a few people might be pleased about, and that is the Syngonium variegata. Tolerance of low light, I give these plants a 5 out of 10. Now then, they will continue to grow in low light. They won't actually cease to grow. Your problem is that these plants will get very leggy in low light, and they just won't look that attractive. 
attractive. They won't look like the plant that you wanted it to. So I do advise giving it a little bit more light in order to combat this. Underwatering, not amazing. I give this plant a three out of 10. I do find if you go a little bit too low on the water, this plant will start to go crispy and it will start to yellow reasonably quickly. Quicker than I expected, actually. So for that reason, I give this plant a low score of three out of 10 because I really think it is a plant that you need to stay a little bit more on top of in terms of watering. Conversely though, you may know what's coming, tolerance of overwatering. I give this plant a 7 out of 10 because honestly, if you water this plant too much and the soil is just a little bit soggy, in my experience, these plants do actually stay pretty plump. They don't really throw a tantrum at all. They look more or less the same, obviously not counting a situation where you've got root rot. But generally speaking, these plants can definitely tolerate a little bit of overwatering. They're pretty good actually in that sense. Tolerance of low humidity, we have a 9 out of 10 because honestly, and this also surprised me, these plants are okay. These plants can do 45% humidity, no problem, which I was really apprehensive about with the whole variegated aspect to it, but it performs just fine. I wouldn't necessarily obviously recommend 45% in order to keep your plants thriving, but it can handle it. I'm pleased to say it can handle it. Lastly, for rate of growth, I give this plant an 8 out of 10 because it really does grow quickly. You can get a really long vine out of these plants in no time at all. So if you're looking to propagate this plant, either to give to friends, either to make a nice big bushy plant, or maybe it's to sell, you will have no problem with this. Honestly, it grows pretty quickly. This gives us an average score of 6.5 out of 10. So we're moving up very, very slowly on the scale. The next plant I have for you guys today is reasonably new. And by new, I mean it's coming into fashion this year. I got it into my shop and I did find it was quite an easy plant to take care of. I was very surprised. And that is the Philodendron Domesticum variegata. Tolerance of low light, I give these plants a 6 out of 10. So if you do not give these plants the light that they quite want, they will not stop growing. They will simply produce growth that is less desirable. So you'll get smaller leaves, you'll get the plant looking a little bit more leggy, but it will not stop growing, which does make it a reasonable candidate for a dark corner. Not only that, but it's variegated, so it's even cooler in that sense. Underwatering for this plant, I give it a 5 out of 10. It's kind of here nor there. It's kind of tolerant, kind of not. It really, really is mid-road for these scores. So I give underwatering a 5 out of 10. Same thing goes, to be honest, for overwatering. I give the plant a 5 out of 10. I don't really notice anything either way, whether it's easy or difficult. It really does just sit at mid-range, which isn't really a bad thing. Some plants on this list are way less than that. So it's kind of good. For tolerance of low humidity, I gave this plant a 6 out of 10 because it's actually surprisingly tolerant. I wouldn't really give this plant less than 50%. To be quite honest with you, I would prefer to give this plant 60% because it does have variegation. And variegation tends to make the plant a lot more sensitive, should we say less strong, less hardy. So I would prefer to give it 60%, but it can grow just fine in 50%. You won't see any issues. The shipping for this plant surprised me like a lot. So usually when we have variegated plants like this, it, they, they don't ship amazingly. I have some, I don't know if you can see behind me, I think they're where my finger are. I have some Philodendron Florida Beauty and the, the sectoral variegation on that is just notorious for not shipping well. It'll go brown, it'll go crispy, it'll just, it'll die. But these plants, for some reason, do not seem to do that, providing you pack them well and you ship them well. I didn't get any cosmetic damage on these plants from bringing them in. So that was really surprising for me to see that they did so well, even though they were variegated. The rate of growth for this plant also surprises me quite a lot because usually with variegated plants, this obviously means that the plant has less chlorophyll, so it has less potential to grow as fast. I can't honestly say that was the case with this plant. These domesticum must have grown around three leaves in about a month. That's incredible. That is a really incredible rate of growth for the plant. So I'm really, really impressed with it and I do score it very, very high on rate of growth. For Philodendron Domesticum variegata, I give this plant an overall average score, a 6.7 out of 10. So we're definitely, definitely getting easier now.
So plant seven out of 10, we're getting towards the end. And this plant, I just, I love this plant. I referred to it in a recent video as an all-rounder because it's just great. It really is great. And that is the Philodendron L Choco Red. So this may surprise a few people, but for tolerance of low lighting, I give these plants a seven out of 10, because honestly, I find that you can put these in a dark corner, not super dark, but dark, and they will still pump out foliage that is of size. They're not gonna go stupidly small and shrink. You should still get really nice round plump leaves. So for that reason, they're pretty good in low light, a lot better than a lot of other philodendron, and obviously certainly some others that I mentioned on this list. For tolerance of underwatering, I also give these plants a 7 out of 10. I do find that they can dry out for a little while. You know, you can miss an underwatering or three, to be quite honest. You won't have too much problem there at all. The same thing really goes for overwatering. I score these plants an 8 out of 10 because honestly, if you drench them a little bit, they're not really going to throw a fit at you at all. I'm not advising to do that, but if you do overwater these plants, they should be just fine. They don't even show signs of yellowing or anything similar. They seem to just kind of stay as they are, which is always a great plus. This might definitely surprise a few people, but for humidity or tolerance to low humidity, I give these plants a seven out of 10 again. Honestly, you can grow these plants in 45% and they will still be okay. Again, I do not recommend anything less than 50% for pretty much any house plant, but these plants can take a little bit of a hit, which does surprise me as they are velvety in texture. So that's really, really good news if you're not always there to fill up your humidifier, or perhaps you live in a slightly drier climate. This is absolutely a plant to try in terms of being able to take a punch when it comes to low humidity. Shipping these plants, I give them a 6 out of 10. And the reason for that is basically I find that they are hit and miss. So on some occasions, the plant will get there and there will be absolutely zero issues. Nothing. The plant looks exactly the same coming out of the box as it went in. Other plants, if, the, if they suffer a little bit in transit, you can get brown spots, you can get yellowing leaves, and you can get crispy leaves. So it's kind of a bit of a spectrum when it comes to shipping. It's not a clear winner in contrast with a lot of the other plants on this list, but it is very, very good at shipping generally. It's really nothing to worry about. For rate of growth, I give these plants a 6 out of 10. Now, they're not super fast growing and they're not super slow growers, they kind of are mid-range, but I do find if you don't give them what they like and they're not happy and maybe you don't feed them as much, they kind of stop growing and they, you, they kind of go dormant, to be honest, and you've got to kind of do something to kickstart them again. So you will still preserve your plant the way it is and it will look pretty, but it's not necessarily going to grow. So you might have to give it a kick up the butt every now and again. These scores together give the Philodendron El Choco Red an average score of 6.8. So we're almost at seven. So we're all, we're doing kind of well. We're really, really getting up now into the plants that if you're new to this kind of thing, you can kind of consider buying the next three if you're really unsure. Before I show you the last three plants on this list, I'm going to give you a quick recap of what we've seen so far and how they scored. So coming in at 5.2 out of 10, so not amazing, we have the Eskeletal. This does grow okay, but if it doesn't, if you don't give it what it needs, it can kind of get paused in time. It can kind of send out runners. So it's not ideal, but it's okay. Only marginally above that, we have the Philodendron Pariso Verde. It doesn't ship fantastically and it doesn't love being overwatered. You kind of have to work to keep it looking, you know, a good ratio of petiole to leaf, so it can grow a bit leggy, but it's not really a difficult house plant. Remember, these plants aren't difficult. They are easy. They're just the least easy on this list. Possibly a little bit of a surprise to some. We have the Anthurium crystallinum coming in at 5.5. So it's all right for an Anthurium that's big and velvety and sexy. It's definitely a contender if you're looking for something a little bit on the easier side. Beware of them when they ship, but once they recover, they will look really good. A medium, medium green, I gave that a 6.3 out of 10. So it's definitely on the easier side. It can grow very, very quickly. It does have thin leaves, so definitely be careful with underwatering. It won't love you. But overwatering, it can actually tolerate it pretty well. So it's a good choice if you're a little bit of an overwaterer and you want something that looks a little bit monstera-ish because I know that's kind of a bit of a mood for everybody right now. 
coming in at 6.5 out of 10. So getting much easier, we have our first variegated plant, which is our Sangonium variegata. Very, very, very quick growers. Just be aware of them growing a little bit on the gnarly side if you don't give them quite as much light as you want. They do propagate very quick though. So if you're looking to propagate this plant quickly, this is absolutely a good candidate for that. For our second variegated plant on the list, we have the Philodendron domesticum variegata coming in at 6.7. So surprisingly easy for a very sexy variegated philodendron. Ships really well, grows really well, doesn't really have an opinion on over or under watering, but it's a very, very sexy plant. It's also becoming very, very fashionable at the minute. Last but not least, so far we have the philodendron El Choco Red coming in at 6.8. Again, I see this plant as an all-rounder because it has visually a lot of hallmarks that a lot of people look for in a really big, sexy, heartly philodendron. Not only that, but they grow well, they respond to underwatering, they respond well, well to overwatering, they're tolerant of low humidity. They're really, really, really beautiful plants. Right then, we have three plants left and these plants are all pretty easy. I think a lot of people are going to be happy to hear this because this plant is a bit of a classic in the world of philodendron and I know a lot of people even now are still looking for it even though it had its moment last year. It hasn't really slowed down in terms of demand and that is the philodendron gloriosum. Yes, really. So for tolerance of low light, I give these plants an eight out of 10. I do find that you can still get really nice, big, pretty round leaves out of them. The only thing I will say is if you don't give them enough light, they will reach for light very, very quickly. Like they will move over to a light source very quickly. Not only that, but the petioles can get very, very long and just stretched. So it doesn't necessarily look how you might want it to. So you might be better off giving this plant more light purely in terms of visual aesthetics and keeping the plant looking, you know, just the way that a lot of people expect the plant to look. For tolerance of underwatering, I give Philodendron Gloriosum a 7 out of 10 because just like Philodendron El Choco Red, these plants can really go just fine in a dry spell. And honestly, you won't get browning, you won't really get yellowing, you won't really get much of anything. The plant will stay looking the same. Obviously, if you never water it, you're going to get damage. That goes without saying for any plant. But generally speaking, these plants really do tolerate underwatering quite well, which surprises me given that they are quite velvety in nature because that can sometimes have an effect. But this plant does have, you know, really big round fat solid petioles. So that does help when it comes to underwatering. For tolerance of overwatering, I give these plants a six out of 10. Honestly, they're okay. No, they don't tolerate being soaked, you know, endlessly, but what plant does. But generally speaking, if you overwater these, they're going to be okay and they shouldn't show too many signs. The first sign you would get would be a yellow leaf, but I think you can go over, you can overwater at least once before you get this problem. So they're not so bad, really. For tolerance of low humidity, I give the Gloriosum a six out of 10. Now, they're not bad, but with this philodendron and a lot of other velvety philodendrons, they do really appreciate the extra humidity getting leaves to unfurl. To be honest, any philodendron with a nice big heart-shaped leaf, you should really be giving them 60% or more, definitely. But this plant can take 50, no problem, and still be okay. You shouldn't see any problems, but if you do, 100% up the humidity and the problem will just go away. Philodendron Gloriosum also ship pretty well. I give these plants an eight out of 10. Every time I ship a plant, every time I have a plant shipped to me, it doesn't really come with yellowing leaves. It doesn't seem to go into shock like a lot of other philodendron might. Now I know I unboxed some plants in Tuesday's video just gone in my shop and the Philodendron Gloriosum in that video didn't look very sexy at all. That's mainly due to mechanical damage in the box. So what I mean by that is I mean physical damage, either knocking, bumping, tearing, folding the plant. So it's not the same as the plant suffering shock. So generally speaking for Gloriosum, I give them a very, very high score. If you're wanting to buy one online, I really wouldn't expect to see many problems unboxing these things. They tend to come pretty good. For rate of growth, I give Philodendron Gloriosum a 7 out of 10. Now these plants grow well, but they don't necessarily grow in a way that people like. And I think when people see Gloriosum on Instagram, they don't necessarily see the way that they grow and the potential kind of hangups that people might have about this plant, if that makes any sense. So what I mean by that is Philodendron Gloriosum are what are known as crawlers, which means they don't really vine up something, they crawl along a surface which is fine, 
but you might find again if you don't give these plants enough light they might start growing a little bit more unpredictably they might start you know turning more and contorting more and petioles might get longer and start pointing in weird directions so if you're going to place this plant and you want it to grow well i recommend you think a little bit more about the space you're putting it in because it can just get a bit gnarly nothing bad will happen and as i say these plants do grow quickly they just don't necessarily grow in a desirable way unless you give them what they're looking for. Because if you don't give them what they're looking for, they're just gonna grow towards it and look for it themselves. You feel me? That said though, I have to give it to the Gloriosum. It gets an average score of seven out of 10, making this plant pretty darn easy if you're looking for something big, sexy, and heart-shaped which a lot of people still are. I've got to say, I don't think the trend for that has died down. I don't think it's going to die down anytime soon. I think the Gloriosum's pretty safe in that sense, especially now, <laughs> now that I've said it's easy. <laughs> Ooh, plant number nine. Now I think, and I'm not sure about this, but this might also surprise a lot of people. It might, it might not. If you saw Tuesday's video, you might have had an indication of this. But the plant that is ninth on my list and is one under the most easy houseplant in this list is none other than Anthurium vicii. I know, it's a long-leafed exotic Anthurium, I know, but hear me out. For tolerance of low light, the vicii gets a whopping 7 out of 10 because honestly, you can give these plants a very shaded corner and you're still going to get growth and you're still going to get leaves of some length. Obviously, they might appreciate a bit of a boost, but if you really don't have that, you will still get good growth out of them. You really won't have anything to complain about. They still come pretty good. Similarly, for tolerance to underwatering, I also give the Vichii a 7 out of 10. As I mentioned before, Anthurium are epiphytes, which means that this plant really quite prefers drier spells. As with most Anthuriums, if you give them a wet spell, then a dry spell, they will kind of love you for it. So if you miss a watering or two and you really let this dry up a little bit, you're not really going to see any issues. It's going to look exactly the same. It's still going to look sexy, it's still going to look long, it's still going to look ribbed, and it's still going to look glossy as hell. It's really, really nice. Overwatering, tolerance to overwatering, I give the Vichii an 8 out of 10. They seem to not mind being a little bit wetter than some other Anthuriums. Not all, but some, just only by a little bit. If you do leave this plant sitting in a little bit of water for a little bit too long, you know, if you're watering bottom up, you won't have any problems. You're not going to see anything. You're not going to see yellowing. You're not going to see anything go wrong. Again, for tolerance of low humidity, I give this plant a 7 out of 10. Now, this plant can dip down to 45% humidity for a short time. You know, if you don't fill up your humidifier or whatever else, don't panic. You're going to be fine. You're not going to see anything. You're not going to see crisping, nothing like that. Don't keep the plant in 45% humidity, as I keep saying, but really, you shouldn't have too many problems. This plant is not velvety, therefore, it can kind of take a little bit more of a hit. And I find that really surprising that this plant is so tough, given that it's a long, exotic, you know, beautiful and Ethereum. So for that reason, if you're looking for something long and exotic and you you know you've heard the horror stories about Queen Anthurium, try a king because they're so much easier to grow and they're so much more tolerant. For tolerance of shipping, I give this plant an 8 out of 10. Generally, when this plant comes out of the box, it looks the same way as when it went in the box. And by that, I mean pretty much no damage. I don't even get yellow leaves. I think I might have had a yellow leaf once and that was shipping them in winter. And that was one leaf out of several, you know, anthurium that I was bringing in. So they're really, really tonk plants. Like, they are tough-ass plants. They can really take a beating. Rate of growth. I give this plant a 7 out of 10 because honestly, it grows just fine. You don't really need to leave it sat next to a humidifier. You can move it back and let other plants, you know, steal the extra humidity. This plant is going to be absolutely fine. Literally, I cannot speak highly enough of this plant. It is a really, really wonderful plant. If you want a really big, long, sexy anthurium and the queen scares the shit out of you, please, I implore you to try a VGI because they're just so good. They really, really are. Not only that, but they look absolutely sick, especially when they get mature. So really, really, really good plant to consider. This plant receives an average score of 7.3 out of 10. So it's damn easy, to be honest. If you've ever had the fear about buying this plant, honestly, just cast it aside because it's a really good one. You're not going to have as many issues as you think. I promise you. I absolutely promise you. <sighs> Last plant on the list. And this plant does not fail to perform for me, to surprise me, to just gain my love and affection because this plant, though it looks like it needs the world, this plant, let me tell you and make no bones about it, this should have been in my original video because it's so good, this plant is hard as 
nails. It really is hard as nails. Appearances on this plant deceive so much. So without further ado, the plant that is easiest in this list is none other than Philodendron melanochrysum. I bang on about this plant all the time. Not only is this plant tough, but quite honestly, any hybrids of this plant are tough. For example, if you have shipped in melanochrysum, I know a lot of sellers are going to agree with me here, if you've shipped in melanochrysum by varicosum, again, very, very tough plants. But generally speaking, this plant has great, great genes. It really, really has got great genetics. It can really take a punch. So without further ado, let's just get into the scores. Tolerance of low light. This plant gets a 7 out of 10. It will not stop growing if you do not give it enough light. It will simply just grow smaller leaves and get a little bit leggier. But generally speaking, lower light isn't too much of an issue for this plant at all. Probably, I would guess, due to the dark foliage, it can maximize the light that it does get. So it can tolerate a little bit lower than a lot of other plants on this list. For tolerance to underwatering, I give the melanochrysum a 7 out of 10. Now, this could well be because the leaves are are actually quite thick. They're not quite succulent in nature, but if you felt the leaf of the melanochrysum, you can feel that they are a little bit thicker than some others, especially when they get more mature. For that reason, they can conserve a little bit more water. So for underwatering, if you underwater this plant, you're not really going to see yellowing leaves, you're not really going to see crispiness. The plant will just kind of stay as it is. Obviously within reason, but generally speaking, for the odd mistake, this plant's going to tolerate it no problem. Oh, okay. So overwatering, let me tell you a little story. I had an instance in my shop late last year. It was in winter. I think one of the melanos at the front got watered one too many times and the plant actually developed a root rot. I checked it. The plant had literally nothing, and I mean nothing at the base. It was still a stem. I didn't really have time to deal with it and it was only the one plant. So I put it in new substrate that wasn't as wet and I stuck a little tag in it that said, you know, do not sell, this plant has root rot. And I put it somewhere else to recover. Now I had to do that because throughout the recovery of this plant, let me tell you, not one leaf was dropped. Not one leaf turned yellow. Nothing happened to this plant. If I didn't put that little tag in that, you know, plant pot, then no one would know and my packer would have literally picked that to send out totally unbeknownst that the plant wasn't actually healthy underneath the soil. These things are so damn tough. I really, I have respect for this plant. It's so tough. Tolerance of low humidity, 7 out of 10. Again, it can drop to 45%. Do I recommend it? Of course not. No, I don't. But it can take it and it won't really change its appearance. It's not going to go crispy. It's going to take a lot for that to happen. So if you miss, you know, filling up your humidifier or you're somewhere a little bit drier, but you want something long and, you know, gothic and sexy, you can still do that with this plant. You can still get that. Shipping, 9 out of 10. Literally, this plant ships amazingly. It nearly always goes in the box and it comes out the box and it looks the damn same. It doesn't change. It doesn't really suffer damage. It really doesn't. It's fantastic. In a rare, rare, rare case, a plant might get a yellow leaf, you know, towards the bottom. But I mean a rare case. It just pretty much doesn't happen. These are so tough to ship. Rate of growth, I give the melanochrysum a 7 out of 10. So they're not absolutely speedy as hell growing. They grow kind of a little bit above average. If you do give these plants, a pole, which is what they seek because, you know, they're climbers, then they will grow a little bit quicker and the leaves will grow larger. If you don't do that, they're not going to love you. But that's more about you just not giving them what they need rather than they just don't grow quickly, if that makes any sense. So give them what they need, give them a pole, give them a little bit extra humidity and they will just go boom and they will grow no problem. This leaves the Philodendron Melanochrysum with a whopping average score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. As I said before, this plant, if I'd known about it at the time, if I'd had the experience that I have now, that plant would have certainly been in the original list. No questions asked. Just amazing plants. Honestly, all the plants in this list are top dog when it comes to easy rare house plants. Are they invincible? No. Will they tolerate 10% humidity? No, but no plants will. No plants are invincible. No plants will do that. I don't really think there is such a thing as an absolute bomb-proof plant. Certainly when it comes to aroids specifically I'm talking about, but generally speaking, these plants are pretty good. And if you wanted to get into rare plants, you want to try out something heart-shaped, you want more of a bougie monster, you want something variegated, all the plants in these lists can be good candidates for you. So please don't shy away from them. Give them a go. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. 
And honestly, I'm genuinely not trying to obliterate people's wish lists or add to people's wish lists with these videos. I'm not trying to torture you all, I'm really not. But this video was really, really highly requested. And to be honest, it has been since I did the first one, which was like last year. So I'm really, really sorry if I've made it worse for people. I didn't intend to. I'm just doing what you all want. You know, I'm just making what you want me to make. If you have any video requests, please leave them in the comments below. Similarly, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. It really, really helps. And if you'd like to see any more of these lists or any other lists or any other content that I happen to do here on YouTube and you haven't already, then please hit that subscribe button. I do have Instagram as well. I have Kaylee Ellen Official and I actually have a Twitter. I know, I made a Twitter. I, I don't know why I made a Twitter, honestly, I don't. I don't even know if I'm gonna use it much. I'm kind of new to the whole Twitter game, but everybody has a Twitter, so I made a Twitter. So if you do wanna follow me on that, then feel free. My username is I'm Kaylee Ellen. I'll do the same thing as last time, just in case anybody asks me. The thing that is on my eyes is this Pat McGrath palette. I think this is Bronze Seduction. Sorry, my palette is a little bit grubby. It kind of gets that way but I have this color right here on my eyes at the minute. I don't know what it's called because I don't have the box with me, but that is what is on my eyes today. Oh, this is also, by the way, the funky red color that everybody asks me about. I will do a tutorial for this on my second channel soon. Um, believe me when I say I've got a lot on at the minute, so the videos on that second channel might not come thick and fast, because I know I have a skincare video for you all as well, but they are coming, honestly, they are coming. But that is what is on my eyes today. And I love this lady. This lady is worth the money, trust me. I have two of these, two of these palettes, and they're so worth the money. I love them. Oh, so without further ado, I love you all very much and I will see you next week. Bye guys.